everyone, and welcome to TFYLP, Transformers for your listening pleasure, <laughs> episode number 279, recorded May, th- uh, or, I'm sorry, March 3rd, 2018. I am your host, Drawn Land, a.k.a. Weird Wolf. Along with me this evening is Rick Alvarez. Here's the thing about chicken. Chicken's only meant to be fried or rotisserie. None of this grilled crap. Chicken's not supposed to be grilled. It's fried or rotisserie. What about Cajun? I like Cajun. Cajun, Cajun spice on top of a fried chicken. Yes. What about Parmesan chicken? Chicken Parmesan. Well, chicken parm's technically fried. Technically. I, I just like it raw. This one's really good. You like extra cock-cock. salmonella? Well, well, there was no salmonella in Japan, so it is quite common to eat uh, chicken sashimi over there. Hmm. Really? Learn something every day. Yeah. <laughs> I ate uh, raw horse last time I was in Japan. It's very good. Who? <laughs> and that new voice that you are hearing uh, there is our newest cast member, Robert Simmons. Welcome to TFYLP. Yo. And if you're watching the video of this, you probably recognize him. It's the it's the chops that that probably gave him away. You've probably seen him at like every bot con like ever. It seems like. What is your uh, like? Do you have a handle online? Like yeah, mutton on, chop five thousand or nah. Uh, mostly on all the various boards, uh, XZOX for ever. Just because you know it's a handle I picked in '99 and now I'm stuck with it because it's everywhere. And it's like, sorry. What, what were you saying? <laughs> X is A O X. Yeah, there's lots of X's in it. Yeah, because they all live in Texas. Yeah, <laughs> crickets chirp. And also, uh, you do some uh, YouTube videos. You started up I a had, new channel. Yeah, I just started it. Uh, there, I used uh, what I call my RPG name, Bruman. Uh, again, used it since '99. So. Start uh, brooming videos. Is it YouTube channels? And, just uh, and what type of videos are these? Porno. Well, Transformer. <laughs> yeah, Transformer <laughs> related. I know it's a shock. Although it'll be whatever toys I feel like. Um, so you feel some, so you feel the toys on the video. Is that? It's a lot of caressing, a lot of smooth caresses See, for you know I about an hour. I don't get that. I don't. Why? I don't just. <sighs> I've confused Rick. Yeah, you played with your gun the last video. Yeah, it's the second one. I actually just uploaded the second one in the gun robos that I was working on. And uh, editing video is a really slow process. It takes about an hour per minute of video for me. It's well, wow, you cool. must have an old computer then. No, no, that's just piecing it together. Oh. It's very tedious. He, he shoots it like animation one frame per, per minute. It's a bunch of pictures. So I manually stitch them together yeah. at 30 it's frames just, a second. Yeah. You know, no, twenty nine point nine seven frames. Twenty nine point nine seven. That's true. He's still working on like Windows ninety seven, dude. <laughs> oh, so he's headmaster Don then. <laughs> we got to We've always got to get a rib for Don in here. Um, but yeah, now we're actually recording this. Um, as many of you know, that uh, my computer having issues with it, so not able to stream live uh, at this time. Uh, once I get a new system and get it set up, uh, hopefully everything will return back to our normal broadcasting schedule. But as such, uh, we are pre-recording these and putting them up at our normal time at 8 p.m. Eastern on our YouTube channel. Um, and a programming note, we will have an episode uh, next Saturday. Uh, however, uh, it will be recorded today because... Uh, I myself will be at Lexington Comic Con in Lexington, Kentucky, uh, helping uh, man the Captured Prey booth. Uh, so if you are in the Lexington, Kentucky area next weekend, or as you're watching that episode that weekend, uh, stop by and uh, check us out. Uh, I believe we're on the second floor up there. Um, if we're in the same place, it's like literally as you go in the door, uh, or right before you go in the door on the uh, second floor. Uh, Lexington Comic Con is always a huge, huge show. Uh, thousands of people in attendance. Great guests this year. Uh, a lot of uh, wrestling guests, which appeal to me. Uh, Chuck Norris is going to be there. Uh, if you love Power Rangers, there's going to be always tons of Power Rangers there. Uh, William Riker from Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, Jonathan Freaks. 
so uh, lots of great guests and lots of great toys to buy there too. There's always good good deals from toys. I know two years ago I bought a, a sealed uh, diver with Niagara base uh, there, and it was uh, it was like near mint condition in the box, you know. Uh, so yes, you can find great stuff at just a general Comic Con. Right. We were going to do so. Next week's show is also going to be pre-recorded. Yes. Uh, we were going to do a best of, but then we realized that nothing about the show is good. So we just uh, yeah. we had to do a whole new show. Yeah. The world's Sorry, shortest guys. clip show. <laughs> uh, we have on tap uh, for that episode. If you're uh, watching this week, uh, next week you should be treated to. Uh, uh, another guest of or guest appearance of Aaron Archer. Uh, he will be on here to talk about uh, Trans Tech, uh, the uh, Transformers line that never was. Uh, we saw lots of uh, video or lots of pictures and uh, and stuff, or a few pictures back in the day, and it was being talked about quite a bit. And then it just disappeared. And along came R.I.D. and it just never happened. So we're going to be Rip. talking about yes, we're going to talk uh, talk a little bit about that and the end of Beast Machines and uh, uh, the transition to R.I.D. and why Trans Tech never came to be and uh, just anything you wanted to know about Trans Tech but were uh, were afraid to ask. Uh, Aaron Archer will be here to help talk us through it. Looking forward to that. Um, so. If you are new to our show, uh, thank you for joining us today and uh, hope you enjoy this show. Uh, check out our website at tfylp.com. Also, we are on Twitter at tfylp, and that's the easiest way to get a hold of me uh, very quickly uh, as it goes right straight to my phone, and I can generally reply within an hour or so. Uh, of a tweet you can just tweet us at tfylp also if you're feeling very sociable check us out on our facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash tfylp we pose our transformers in very suggestive uh poses and post them online there uh and uh, uh you can go and check out lots of great toy porn there uh so uh, without further ado let's get into some things that uh, weren't so hot uh, throughout the Transformers storied history. Uh, I've entitled this episode Transform Maz. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Transform Maz. Uh, because they were lines that either came and gone uh, uh, without much ballyhoo or uh, they just they tried but just really didn't succeed in what they were set out to do. Um, and just for example, I know that's one of the things we're going to talk about, uh, but just for example, one of the lines that come to mind whenever you think of lines that had high hopes for but just didn't really work, um, Power Core Combiners. Uh, you know, whenever they were announced, I was really excited for them. Uh, you know, th they sounded cool, you know, but whenever they came out, they just, they fell flat. You know, it was... Uh, a huge disappointment. Like the core bot was usually somewhat good, and then you had these little drones that were <laughs> just killed by a spring loaded gimmick. Um, so, and the line just tanked. And then you have the uh, the, the spastic uh, debacle that, that happened overseas. Um, I know that got renamed. What was it? What, what did it get renamed here? Burnout or something like that? I don't remember. Oh right, right. Yeah, yeah. had a, had a sticker put over his uh, his name tag here, even though that word doesn't have the same connotation in in North America as it does in Great Britain. Uh, so, which is where the uh, the problem in question came out. Uh, but that's just one of the things we're going to talk about. Rick's got a list of stuff. He's going to uh, throw them out to us and see where uh, see what sticks and uh, uh, what we think about uh, these lines and uh, we'll just kind of go into them a little bit more in depth all right so I, I put a list together and i didn't tell anyone what's on my list and it's not it's not a list that says all right well the features weren't good uh it's a list about 
there was a couple figures released, and then it just kind of went away. And there wasn't a whole lot of follow-up. Um, so, the most famous one of all, to give an example, is Machine Wars, which was a KB exclusive, came out in 1997 during the uh, uh, amazing build-up of Beast Wars. And it was really trying to bring the vehicles back into the fold of Transformers. And they put out, uh, what, eight basics, two Voyagers, uh, and two liters. And that was it. And that was the whole line. And a lot of the line were uh, reissued European figures and reused art. So As cheap as they can get it. Yeah, just kind of pushed it out as quickly as, as they could, and that was the end of it. So uh, that's the most famous one. Robert, your, I'm gonna, your thoughts on Beast Mach- on uh, Machine Wars? You know, I'm going to play devil's advocate to a lot of this stuff, uh, given that, I mean, you were with Hasbro for a while, so maybe you have some deeper insight into some of the later lines to give us kind of more. Did this really fail, or was it still successful, but not as successful as Hasbro would have liked? Because, of course, they want everything to be a runaway hit. But with Machine Wars, given that all the tooling was there, all the molding was there, it probably didn't have to hit that high of a bar to be successful and to be what they do. And that would be why it ends if they ran out of molds to, you know, recolor or repaint or reship as a KB only line. Well, a lot of the molds were still there from the UK. So, and from Generation 2. So they definitely had molds available to them. But it was a one and done. There was there was never ever, from what I could find from working at Hasbro, any other Machine Wars figures planned. They hit. And that was the end of it. I mean, see, that's what I'm wondering: is was it just a way for them to get those European exclusive molds out to U.S. customers, and they achieved that? And it's like, okay, we're good. No, no, that that was not the intention. No, okay. nobody there said, hey, you know what? The, our domestic fan base really wants these toys. Let's create this whole subsection. Let's go through all the copyright pricing. Let's go through all the name locking that we need to do just so they can get these four molds that never came out in the U.S. Well, I mean, if it, everything yeah, that, was reused, all the molds were reused. You said all the art was reused or a lot of it. The, ex- except for the basics, yeah. Okay. So what was their goal the, with the line then? The goal was to... Uh, reintroduce vehicles into the Transformers mythos. Because everything was Beast. You had Beast yeah. Wars was a huge... I think uh, Beast Wars was at the end of Season 2 already during this. Uh, so everything was Beast. Nobody was used to vehicles whatsoever. So this was a purely vehicle-based toy line. But... Hence why the font the problem, had, a, had a Beast Wars theme to it. The, uh, yeah. the Machine Wars font, uh, Machine Wars was kind of like a take on the Beast Wars. Logo. Yeah, the pack, the packaging was very similar, uh, yeah. design wise to the Beast Wars. I'm looking at my my late Euro shelf right now because since those were the ones you know re- re- that were recolored into Machine Wars, kind of thinking about them. So Thunder Clash came out. Yeah. In that line, um, Roto Storm came out in that line, and I think part of the problem was it went to KB. It went to Who? KB. It went to, exactly. It went to KB <laughs> Toy Store, and that was it. I think if it had a broader appeal, like if it went to Toys R Us, I wouldn't even say Walmart or Target. But if it went to Toys R Us at the time, I think it would have lasted longer than the um, much smaller KB uh, than the twelve figures that that existed. Do you think that it was intended to be just a short-run series, or was it intended uh, to be like the beginning of something that could have parlayed into something bigger? I think the intention was that we're going to make this, we're going to double the amount of Transformers we're selling. But unfortunately, the shift had happened in such an extreme direction that the world wasn't ready for machines. And I it think also the, had, lack, the lack of availability being exclusive to KB also made it difficult. And it, it also had no fiction supporting it. You know, it didn't have anything selling. It didn't have the cartoon on the shows. It's going to be hard to compete with toys, you know, with Beast Wars toys that have a full show airing every afternoon on Fox Kids. 
versus, you know, here's some toys without the fiction to say, oh, hey, mommy, I want to go buy that. Bio on the back is all you've got. Yeah. But it still carries a Transformers name. Yeah. And yeah. and that's what they're trying to, to capitalize on. So, all right, let's 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 move away from Machine Wars. I'm going to throw something at you, Duran. I don't know if you're if you this was even on your radar. Stealth Force. No. So Stealth Force the mass, was an idea. They were the mask-like vehicles, right? It, it was a mask-like vehicle, right. These items didn't transform into robots. They were cars, and you could uh, press a button, and doors would swing open, and guns would come out, or headlights would pop down. And uh, I love it, it when it, the headlights pop down. It was like a mid-transformation that became like a car, but then it became an armor mode car, and that served as the inspiration for the Wreckers. And stealth mode is kind of seen in Dark of the Moon. Uh, somewhat. That mid-transformation battle sequence. Uh, that was something that we really pushed for in the movie. Because we thought that's going to be... That's what's going to save RPMs. And you can say RPMs is also part of the... <laughs> the robot-powered machines. Which is... Hasbro's answer to Hot Wheels. So we can we can wrap Stealth Force and RPMs together. Um, I had like the, exactly uh, one RPM. <laughs> I had zero. So I, I didn't even realize Stealth Force existed. That's so why I just you know looked it up on the wiki. I, real I quick remember here. it. I remember it, uh, and I remember seeing a few in the store. But they just like I liked Mask because it wasn't they they weren't intended to be robots, but Stealth Force just kind of defeated the whole purpose to me. And really, it didn't feel like a transformer, so I, I, that's yeah. what, I had no interest in it. Now with <laughs> Stealth Force, I think, all right, I, I see what they're trying to do here. They're really trying to appeal to that car, Hot Wheel, Matchbox type person. But then they started throwing in like characters like Big Hoss or Top Spin or like Knockout or Dirt Rocket, High Wire. Do you know who those characters are? As it pertains to dark of the moon or no no I, it was a very odd character selection and I, I think that has to do with the designer wanting to do something the marketer being okay with it and not really knowing the brand where they should have said all right we obviously need optimus and bumblebee and starscream barricade who else do we need right we need we need a movie ratchet we need an iron hide rather than these kind of obscure or made-up characters you know, and it's, it's it's sad on a side note, uh, and I think we, we're probably going to mention this a lot uh, with a lot of these lines, is the failure in marketing. The connection between marketing and design, I guess, uh, as it were, is like somebody there in marketing or a group of people in marketing just doesn't know the brand well enough to know well, this is an established character. This is not. This is something that should sell well. This probably won't. You know, it's just like, okay, let's just slap the Transformers name on it and let it go. Uh, and I kind of wonder how many different lines uh, throughout Transformers history has uh, fallen to that pitfall. You know, Power Core Combiners really didn't have, outside of the, uh, the bomb shock with the, the military vehicles, which had, a, which had a reminiscence of Bruticus, it was the only Power Core Combiner that really had any kind of connection outside of the, the little subline itself. All the lines just kind of, I mean, all the characters in that line were just standalone, here, here you go. I, yeah, uh, I, go ahead. I actually liked Power Core Combiners for what it was. Um, I, I do feel like a lot of the, the middle robots were some good toys. That's still one of my favorite modern uh, Huffer interpretations is from Power Core Combiners. Um, but, it, you know, I mean, I think it helped. I mean, I mean you know, I don't want to say bring Combiners back because even when Transformers hasn't had Combiners, we've still had Combiners. You know, Energon had tons of combiners you know they had the two bot combiners we had the minicon combiners you know even armada you know you made the sword you know we had combiners so you know so combiners is a lot of people think oh combiner wars finally brought combiners back and that definitely 
was bigger in a bigger way than we'd seen it in a long time. But we've had this long history of combining. You know, it's power core combiners definitely came and went. Um, you know, the I think you know as you said the little spring loaded little things were kind of a neat idea, a fun idea. But I just don't think they they just didn't have that sticking point to them to really last beyond an idea. We tried it and then we moved on. Yeah. So. I think I think part of the branding error with that was where did they fit into? Because they weren't branded as movie toys. Even though they, they had a similar package. They I always they had thought of similar, them as movie toys. Yeah, they had a similar package and a very similar design aesthetic, but they were never branded as anything other than Power Core Transformers. So as a consumer, you wouldn't know, do these belong on your movie shelf? Do these belong with your Generations toys? And, and the teams, they had the Protecticons, the Destron, Stunicons... Where do, where do these fit? So power core combiners kind of have their own shelf in my world. They're, yeah. they're kind of their own thing and don't necessarily, for me, fit with the movie and don't fit with Generations. They're in that other category. I found it interesting that uh, power core combiners was hit a nerve with somebody like in a good way enough that we even got the third party, uh, was it Chaos Paladin? That worked with power core combiners and they tried to do a little bit with that usually you know well the there's also the, hits the big uh, targets there was also the iron power army combiners. iron yeah. army uh came out that yeah. uh could go with bomb shock and essentially made like a world war ii style bruticus uh, and i thought yeah. that was pretty awesome but these are upgrade kits and what are upgrade kits other than to amplify what's there yep. mm -hmm. right because what's there just isn't up to par in some people's opinions. Well, what are some other lines that, that kind of fell under that? Under which Well, uh, you're saying that had needed upgrades? or Well, not necessarily upgrades, but just fell under the the banner of... fell just a bit short. All right, I'm going to throw this one at you, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preface this by saying, yes, there was a substantial amount of product for this line released, but... Domestically, in the United States, where Hasbro is based out of, it's a U.S.-based company where, in my opinion, everything should be, be, be released in their main market. A lot of the toys ended up going to Canada. Construct the bots. Yeah. I was waiting for that one to come up. Uh, Construct box reminds me of how earlier when you were talking about the RPMs as Hasbro's answer to uh, Hot Wheels. Is it feels like the success of the movie injected so much money into Hasbro they just said, what is every other popular toy? We're going to do our version of it. and Slap just, Transformers on it. Yeah, and so, you know, we got Creo, which I like Creo, but, um, you know, I think that's that's another one that I think didn't live up to its potential. Construct Bots, which was just, I was just rolling my eyes the entire time it came out. RPMs, like you said, and there's more, you know, of just, oh, we have to do that. I'm surprised there's not Transformer Play-Doh, transform Doh. Or something, well, there, you know. There, there is, but it's oh Jesus, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, there is, tr there is Transformers Play-Doh, yeah. It's, it's all movie branded. It's all movie branded, so it fits within the the mm. movie. You know, and we got Robot Heroes because that was popular at the time as well. You know, it's just this. Oh, somebody else did that. Let's make a Transformer version. We we got all this money to spend. All right. So being on the inside, th this was yeah. something that that came about while I was there. Uh, what's in Connecticut, right? Hasbro's in Rhode Island, Lego's in Connecticut, right? And they're always swapping people back and forth, right? You get let go from Lego, you go to Hasbro and vice versa, hmm. right? So Creo is that answer to Lego, right? Constructabots is that answer to the buildable action figure, which I think everybody saw coming from for Star Wars, from Lego, right? Uh, I think it came a little before Star Wars, but there was also that um, Lego line. Uh, was it Ninjago? What was that Lego action Blanking figure line? Um, I mean, this is a Bionicle, if that's what you're talking Bionicle. about. Bionicle. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. I can't remember if Bionicle. I can remember if Lego made it or not. Right. So Bionicle has come and gone, right? It's been replaced with the Star Wars action figures, the buildable action figures. And this is the answer to Bionicle. This is Hasbro's answer to Bionicle. And I and I, a lot of people, I would think, would say, well, they had so much product, how can you say it's a failed line? Yeah, but all that product 
came out at the same time within a short window and there was never any follow up to it. Here's a huge wave one or whatever and Right. Here's wave one and three all at the same time. Yeah. And then the, we're gonna ship the rest to Canada. Because it's not no one in the US is gonna buy it. I wonder why how they determined that. You know, that that the American uh, wallet was not interested in it. No. You know Send that was, that was beyond me, and I could never. I was never involved in that decision. Well, these are going to this particular market. Did Usually, it that sell stuff well was planned out Canada? ahead. I don't know. I remember uh, last time I was in Canada, uh, a young man named Chris Ho was nice enough to give me the tour and take me to all the toy stores and. I found a lot of the construct bots on clearance in Canada. A lot of the ones that I wasn't able to get here, so I kept buying them all. And I think another I think the problem as a fan, as an older, you know, as an adult fan, the name construct-bots. Construct the cons, man. Mm-hmm. Come on. It's right there. <laughs> and they never made the construct the cons. <laughs> the construct bot construct cons. Right. That would have been too confusing. More like construct a cans. Wah wah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, uh speaking about Creo, that's another one that comes to mind uh as well. I mean, yeah, the Creons, the little uh, the little figurines, they Somewhat did okay, I guess. They lasted longer. They lasted longer, but the uh, the Creo uh, action figures themselves, uh, they came and went. Uh, I had the Jazz, and while it was okay, it just I didn't like the ha- the 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 fact that I had to. Okay, I had my robot. Now I want to put it in car mode. Let's dis- disassemble the whole damn thing and then reassemble it in another. I, you know, if I want to play with Legos, I'm sorry, I'll play with Legos. And yep. these things, I hate to say it, were just a continuation of Built to Rule for me. And well, Built to Rule were better than Built to Rule, but yeah, they were better. Were they were better executed, but they yeah. they still had the same stigma to me. Right. So uh, a great designer, his name was uh, Richard Woodhouse. He designed all the Creo stuff. And looking at because this also happened while I was working there. So looking at where it started off with his concepts versus what actually got released were, were night and day. Mm-hmm. And the, the best example for Transformers I can think of was Ironhide. You had this beautiful, gorgeous SUV, or not the SUV, the uh, pickup truck from the movie, and you'd reconstitute it into this awesome robot. And that, that wasn't even an option. That never even came out. And for Joe... You had this beautiful his tank, really, really nice his tank, like, like a small leader sized toy, with actually moving shreds, and then the his tank's a little tiny thing that finally came out with another set. So where they started versus where they ended up were two completely different things, and I don't know if it had to do with cost or because they were trying to introduce this this brand new concept. To the marketplace or another marketing mishap potentially but um people who buy legos who are lego fanatics don't cross the streams you're you're a lego person till the end there's a few people out there who are mega blocks and there's a few people like me who play in everybody's sandbox you know, Mega Bloks, Lego, Creo. I, I like it all. It sh- you know, wh- what's the Toys R Us one? Sure, sure Lock? Mm. Sure Lock, which is awful and doesn't stay together, but they made a really cool Terminator set. All right. I, so, I feel so, like I bought all of Creo when it came out, and I've since then I scaled back a lot of it, and I, could, I can't even sell it on eBay, to be honest. And I kind of hate that we're talking about Creo without Jim here. Yeah. Where the hell is he, anyway? I don't know. But well, he, he bailed you know, us. <laughs> I well, all right. So. The biggest problem I had with Creo is, again, like kind of like you were saying, Rick, you're not gonna you're not gonna beat Lego at their own game. And I feel like with all these, was Hasbro trying to compete with somebody at their own game? But you know what, Transformers is so good at is transforming. That's why they're there. That's why it's the name. 
and you couldn't transform them until like the tail end after the line was effectively dead in everyone's minds. And like I never even saw those on the shelves. You know, the ones right. that you could rotate back and forth without tearing them apart. Yeah. And so I feel like if they had started with that, you know, because yeah. by then they looked good at least, unlike Built to Rule, which looked like Built to Rule. Built um, to Suck is what a yeah. lot of people call them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like I think if they had started with that, it might have lasted a little longer because they brought something unique to the building block play pattern. Yeah. Now, uh, Creo was a learning experience. You know, as, as you said, they started with, you know, you have to take it all apart from robot to vehicle. And towards the end, it became more of a transforming thing. Uh, it was a learning experience. But I, I wouldn't necessarily call Creo itself a failure. I would say, you know, Creo still around. If you if you go to the Dollar General stores, yeah. there, the there's still fix, product out there. But what's interesting about Creo is that a lot of the G.I. Joe sets got re-released. At, but all the G.I. Joe branding and all the G.I. Joe stickers got taken out. So it's just Creo. War toys. Jeep. War Jeep. It's Creo <laughs> uh, Warplane. It's not... And I think huh. the reason behind that is because Lego does not do war. They don't do tanks. They don't do military jets. They really don't do guns, except for like cowboy police officer stuff. And I think that's the niche that Creo now is trying to fit in. But it's at those dollar store, dollar general locations. Hmm. Why would they remove a popular branding like G.I. Joe from something? <laughs> because popular what is, brand what is G.I. Joe? Joe? Well, G.I. Joe. Joe, you know what G.I. Joe is. Does a six-year-old know what G.I. Joe is? Not anymore. No. And I, th- I think it's a mistake to remove the G.I. Joe brand from it. And just release it as Creo, but for whatever reason, that was deemed acceptable. So uh, let's just wrap it up of the brick stuff with Built to Rule real quick. Built to Rule uh, came out during Armada Energon. Uh, most of it came out during the Armada period, but the second wave of Energon figures only came out in the into the Cincinnati test market, which is Hasbro, Kenner's usual test market. I saw market a couple area. of them in this area around here. I guess we're close but enough. You're close to, to Cincy. Yeah, yeah, close enough, yeah. Um, yeah. I do recall seeing some of those, but I remember whenever Built a Rule was first announced and uh, and everything, and we hadn't seen any of it yet. I'm like, you know, I like Legos as a kid. You know, I kind of like where this is going. You know, bringing bringing Legos into Transformers, and then uh, the first one came out. We saw the pictures, and I'm like, you know, is that that look of horror whenever you see it? You're like that <laughs> that looks that thing looks awful. But you know, off, like yeah, Indiana Jones, yeah. Um, but I remember whenever I first saw them, I'm like, it looks awful. But I'll I'll give it a try. And I, got, I remember I got Smokescreen. I think it was like the first one released, uh, our model Smokescreen. Right, which was the orange construction vehicle, mm-hmm. not and the sports car. I hated it. It was awful. It didn't no, lock together no properly. No articulation. Didn't really look like uh, Smokescreen at all. I mean, vaguely, it like had his colors and sort of had his head and, and everything. And they had a Minicon, and I'm like... That's about where the similarities end. You know, he was janky. He mine mine didn't particularly stay together very well. It that it, was, it, a it was just a, a huge lot of fail. Rules. The, they didn't lock in. Yeah. And the biggest problem for me was the Optimus Prime with that trailer. That trailer would not lock in, which was very frustrating when you're trying to display it or take a picture of it for a book. Just incredibly frustrating, and it makes you want to not do it. Uh, all right, so there, there's the brief history of, of bricks. I'm going to throw. Well, we forgot broadside. <laughs> Gee, what broadside? I'm, I'm going to throw something at you guys. This is a subsec section segment. Kiss players. Oh. But- so Duran, um, you're a overweight, uh, balding male. Uh, With a goatee. Why don't you explain to us? what the significance of kiss players in the Japanese culture represents. Well, not being, not being the 
as well versed on uh, Japanese culture as, as, as some people are. Uh, in Japan, some things that we may consider taboo or or a little bit inappropriate here in, in, in the Western market. Uh, in Japan, not so much. Uh, you know, matter of fact, it's, uh, it's, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I have been told on numerous occasions that there are vending machines in Japan where you can buy women's panties. And, used. Yes. Used yeah. women's I've panties. never seen one of those over there, but I've, I've, I've heard of the rivers, legends that's too. That's never true. So if it is true, and, you know, and which, you know, I've heard multiple people tell me about these that Maybe have been in to, like the Rapungi area, but yeah. like, uh, but you know, you have a society that allows this, you know, and the Japanese culture can tend to, you know, once they get outside of their work environment, they like to let loose. And it's almost as if it's a no holds barred type, type uh environment in my in my opinion uh so you know little girls and being sexualized over there it's not as frowned upon as it is here right apparently. so uh, th there's a whole uh economy built up around um figures of uh young looking women uh in suggestive outfits and poses uh some of this has leaked over to uh pop culture uh you know, Bushido-style figures of Ghostbusters or Freddy Krueger or where they're, you know, cute little sexy versions of Jason Voorhees. Uh, <laughs> that stuff exists. Uh, we're not I imagine they, judge, they would look a lot like Rob. We're not to judge that, that <laughs> culture. We're just here to uh, talk about the line. So Kiss Players, 2005-2006, uh, a couple different style of figures released. You had uh, G1 reissues, World Smallest, Transformers, and Alternators, all falling into the Kiss Players uh, line. The Alternators, you had the, uh, as far as I can recall, it was the only way in Japan you can get Hot Rod. And he came with a fishing pole, which is really cool. Uh, but he also came with a little tiny figure of a girl that... Uh, we see your underwear, Rob. <laughs> uh, that came with a little girl, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> there you go. There you she have is. your video, Wonder yeah. Wonderful. Sure, Thank you sure for showing us behind. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Convoy. Uh, I don't understand, you know, how they felt, how Takara felt it was a, a good idea to jump into that that market uh convoy there are no pickup trucks in, in japan you know there's no dodge rams over there so to get a pickup truck made it had to be convoy so to release it in japan i guess they not only want to go to the transformers fans but they also want to go to these collector fans so convoy came up with a little marissa fairborn figure uh and the surfboard surfboard and the surfboard would turn into a sword and the figures came with uh, removable legs, so you can put them in a seated position or in a standing position. And seated, they, you know, they would go uh, inside the vehicle, inside the alternator. So, so, so Prime was saying, "Give me your legs instead of give me your face." Right, but then there there were comics that came with it, like a, like a CD with with a comic in it. And, and CD there, is the uh, operative word here. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, so in the comics, it, it would be like. Marissa Fairborn, you're getting a little too chubby. You should stop eating so much cherry ice cream. So th that's something that's actually from the comics, right? So uncomfortable. It is uncomfortable to talk about. And back in the day, before uh, I worked at Hasbro, I remember people asking Hasbro about Kiss players, and it was uncomfortable for them to talk about too. It's it's. Japanese culture. It's like, can we bring it here to the United States and have these scantily clad young children on the package and in the box? And yeah, I, I mean, the biggest claim to fame with Kiss players is by far the Megatron rape mouth. And if you don't know what I'm talking yeah. about, go Google it. It's so, 
It's out there. I think the biggest sin, toy-wise, was the world's smallest Transformers. It was uh, Auto Trooper or Auto Scepter. Auto Rooper. Uh, exact Auto Rooper. Auto Rooper, yeah. Yeah, he was an alternator. He was standard size alternator. And then I think it was a remold of Jazz Meister. And then they made a smaller, world's smallest version of it. And that world's smallest version came with, with a little girl as well. But on the package, on the front of the package, she's sitting on her bum and she's pulling up her skirt and the transformer is going into is looking into the void and that's something that exists in the world of transformers if you don't know what it sees uh, or or, 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 uh, if you have not seen it i'm sure it's on google somewhere yeah and uh let's not forget to mention that the way the Transformers got their power was by getting kisses on the cheek from the li- from the young ladies. That's how they were able to power up. Now, that's not to say that this line didn't have some success in the fact that they were some really good molds used. Uh, for example, that Hot Rod, the the, uh, the Mirage This toy is mold. awesome. It is awesome, and it's a really good color scheme. I remember yeah. I, I liked the, uh, the Sound Blaster, or I mean, I'm sorry, the, uh, uh, the, the Blaster version of uh the uh, scion xb the silver one uh yeah mm-hmm. the sk- the skids i actually owned i actually owned that one and uh, that's one of the only kiss plays i've ever owned and i i liked it, it I, I really dug the the toy itself and i remember whenever i got it it was the first and only kiss play figure i ever actually owned and whenever i got it it's like I opened the package and I tried not to look at the little girl figuring. I just, it's like, I didn't even take it from the package. Yeah, it's like, I felt so terrible having this package delivered to me. It's like, I, I, I got this toy from my wife. Um, I told her I wanted it for, like a, I don't know, if it was a Christmas or a birthday. I was like, order me that. And it comes in in the box. And the box has, and I'm not, I'm not going to run out to my garage to get it, but, you know, it has this girl here and she's doing like, you know, a real high kick, you know showing off like some of her panties or whatever and my wife is like what the fuck did you have me buy yeah and i just was like uh, I, <laughs> I was like it's a yeah, toy I, trust me <laughs> uh i had my mother-in-law come through my toy room one one day and she looks over and she sees the little auto roper world smallest box and she's like what is that and i just had to explain to her like that's not something that i'm you know i i collect transformers and that's a transformers item that's that's not something. It's Japanese. You know, she's she's like barely literate. I, I fucking hate her. Uh, <laughs> oh, and I'd like to point out, I just forgot. She has a, uh, I don't know if it's focused, but she has a padlock around her neck as well, which is really, really odd. Some bondage oh. going on there. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, all right. So, again, it's not, it's not that the figures of any of these particular lines were bad. Some of them were bad. Yeah. Um, so, some of them were good. Uh, Obviously, it didn't take off in they, Japan that long. The they only had didn't take three off. big releases, and then after that, they had some, you know, some smaller releases. Well, e hobby PVC figure. Didn't they do yeah. an e hobby kiss play? Uh, the it, the glit the, the, and... the Riggi wasn't uh, kiss players. I don't think. I think it was just Vinyl Tech. Oh, technically, or well, Vinyl Tech Asterix. I'm not sure which. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right, so Robot Masters, another. This was like a pre Armada line. At 2004, 2005, Robot Masters was a Japanese exclusive line. It started off by creating all new molds of significant characters from Transformers history uh, Beast Wars Megatron, Beast Wars Optimus Primal, G1 Convoy, Star Saber, Victory Leo. And then it, like most lines, what else do we have that mm-hmm. can supplement this? Here comes the repaint parade. Mm-hmm. You had Machine Wars thrown in. You had G2 thrown in. Um, and it lasted a year. It spanned two years, but it really lasted w- one whole year. Of new that everything, yeah. Uh, yeah, everything just kind of came out, and, and that was it. And you had a really, really cool Starscream figure that was the first Starscream figure that actually looked like the animation. And it had everything all in one package, like the fists and uh, and the wings. They didn't detach. You could transform the whole toy uh, into from jet to robot without having to detach anything. And it yeah. did it well, actually. And we, uh, well, 
I kept suggesting uh, during my time at Hasbro, hey, we have these to- these tools, let's use them. Unfortunately, because of their size, they weren't quite basics, they weren't quite deluxe. So they never fit into the price point. Hmm. And that was the reason we never got them out through the main line. And then I think BotCon at one point, we tried using the Starscream mold, but it had disappeared. Mm. Wow. So um, there were some some really cool toys. The Victory Leo and, and the Star Saber actually combined into Victory Saber. Uh, they, they were heavily inspired by the cartoon, as with the Beast Wars figures. But then you had... Uh, here comes your uh, smoke screen and uh, uh, Dreadwing repaint from G2. Here comes your Machine Wars repaints. Here comes your laser cycles. And they were cool reprints of those figures. Uh, but and, they, didn't, com- they didn't fall in the same line as the other previous releases. Yeah. Right. And then how do you, where do these fit on your shelf? Are these universe toys? Are these generations toys? Where exactly do do they go? Yeah, that line always confused me. The only ones I ever bought were the Star Saber and Victory Leo, which I don't have anymore. I eventually got rid of them. Um, but I bought them just because it was a cheap way to get those characters compared to what the vintage cost, you know, until I was able to afford the vintage. Um, just, I don't know, the line always confused me. And as a Transformer collector, when you make a line that, you know, my type isn't even interested in that much, you know, I think that's probably not a good sign you know i don't know it just it never clicked with me i i had them all uh except for some of the exclusive repaints uh, i think the most exclusive repaint i had was the burning convoy the uh the translucent red optimus primal um and i actually owned that one later um but i had all the first releases uh, releases you know prime megatron starscream uh thundercracker and skywarp came in a two-pack um, you know, th- there were some really good good figures in that line, and I had the, in- the entire line at one time. Um, they had a shelf onto their uh, on all to their. They self. were their own thing. Yeah, they were their own thing. Uh, but like Rick said, you know, they ultimately I got rid of them because you know whenever I wanted to pare down my collection, that's back whenever I had well over two thousand figures, and you know I'm like I want to get my collection down to where I can manage it. I'm tired of it, like, going into every room, and there's Transformers in every room, you know. And, uh, you know, I was looking at things. And I, I'm, Robot Masters were one of the first things to go. There were some cool toys there. It's just that they just didn't fit anywhere. Anywhere. And the fact that they didn't... Now, maybe if they had continued, like, uh, like Rick said, you know, after... After, you know, the second year, they continued with new molds and kept going with robot lines. They could have been their whole, whole second, you know, sub-line, you know, like Generations. Uh, it would have made sense to hold on to them. But, you know, once... And that's another thing that's really frustrating with a lot of these lines that we're talking about is that, you know, and as, as we mentioned, some of them actually have some good toys uh, in them, and you get interested in them get invested and then they just end and and once they end you're like okay i wasted my time and money on these and a lot of people just unload them and they just wind up floating out there in nothingness see i mean of course you have your uh collectors that love certain sublines and you know despite the fact that they were very short-lived they hold on to them or just to be completion completionist they hold on to things uh, but me, I'm, I'm one of those that like, you know, don't, don't tease me and then yank the rug out from underneath of me. I don't like so, that as a collector. You know, maybe Rick knows, you know, when they start off a line like this with a lot of new molds and then they get into repaint town, um, are they doing that because the line at that point has basically already failed? You know, if they're doing that, you know, because I'm saying, well, if they kept making new molds, maybe it, you know, it would have well, kept that's going the case, longer. Combiner Wars would have ended. Because they got into repaints really quick. (laughs) That's a good point. I think it's um, it's a combination of let's introduce a new line, and we only have so much tooling dollars. What can we use to supplement that line? So it's kind of a decision made early on that it's going to be this much new tooling, this much repaints, right? And then after the dust settles, say, hey, is this worth another wave or another year of this? 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, Combiner Wars had like what four and a half molds, I think, and then everything else was repaints. Pretty pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure there's only two Combiner Wars molds. Oh, only two. Just tricking okay. us. Okay. Yeah, they're 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 just kind of tricking us into into all of them. But I love every <laughs> freaking one of them. <laughs> um, except for that damn Prime mold. That was yeah. I wish we had gotten a better Motormaster. If, looking back on Combiner Wars, I wished we had gotten a better Motormaster. That's my biggest wish. Anyway. I didn't get into Combiner Wars much. Uh, All right, let me throw another one at you. Alternity. Hmm. Alternity is what Takara wanted from Vinyl Tech to begin with, and they finally got it out there. And nobody um, wanted and it. <laughs> so Alternity I think at that is point, 2009. Alternators had come and gone mm-hmm. at that point. And Alternity was a smaller version, so it didn't fit with your alternator figures. It was still a licensed car, uh, Nissans, uh, for the most part. I-, I think Fiat made it in there, too, with Bumblebee. Well, who's the Starscream toys? Because it was the Starscream Jaguar, toys. maybe? Or maybe that's Megatron? I mean, I have them right over there. <laughs> a few of them. Yeah, and then I got the Bumblebee, which was really not a good mold. The Starscream was a decent, decent toy. That thing is beautiful in car mold. The robot modes are, eh. You know, they tried to make it work. Yeah. Um, I th- I, to me, I think Alternity really went missed a lot just because it, it felt very piecemeal. Like, here's a figure. <laughs> here's a figure. You know, some time passes. And then, you know, there was no Hasbro counterpart. There was no stateside counterpart to it at all. There wasn't a Uh, whole lot of uh, uh, media backing to it either. It's like once in a while you'd say, oh, here's a, like you said, oh, here's a new alternative figure. uh, And it would come and go uh, without much fanfare, honestly. And they repainted a lot. And they they really stretched their molds out. For, you know, again, a line that has three molds, they really stretched them out. No, I think it was more than three. I think or four. There There's four the Prime, or five, Prime, right? Prime, Megatron, Bumblebee, and uh, Starscream. But there's also uh, Star Saber and Diatlas. Okay. And I think those okay. were those were towards the end of the line. I think those were other. Maybe cars. I missed some. Yeah, I know the la- the last couple of Alternity figures, the Diatlas, the Star Saber, uh, those are tough to get. Not a whole lot of people have them because not a whole lot of people bought them when they first came out. Uh, so they are tough to find on the secondary market. Um, but uh, uh, they exist and they're out there. Die Atlas is a repaint of the Prime. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, right. more the four. Yeah. So um, everybody here wears shoes, right? I mean, yes. Yeah, so not the currently, tra- but yes. <laughs> Transformers Nikes. And I I think this falls under the PlayStation 2 uh type of thing. There the Genesis. Are, you're right, the Sega Genesis. The there hats. there are yeah, the hats, the ice cream bar. Ice cream uh, bar. That's a new one. Uh yeah, it wasn't That's actually it was part of Gary Transformers, Gary but it wasn't a Transformer character. It was it was the company's character Got it. that transformed. But well, it that's was awesome. Up. I gotta get that. <laughs> there are almost I, a dime a dozen. <laughs> yeah, and I think there's a variant on that on that one too. Uh, kind of like the Disney Transformers. Um, Got you those. know the the Mickey Mouse and the Donald Duck, and then there was the Combiner and the Bumblebee. Oh, wait, right. the Bumblebee was Donald Duck. Uh, they also did a uh, Buzz, just a, a Buzz that transformed to spaceship. Yes. Uh, here, I'm going to throw something at you. Know, I want to. I want to see if you guys know it. Um, don't all speak at once. Transformers go. <laughs> Duran. I wanted to get behind that line. I really, really wanted to get behind it because, being a Brave fan, uh, some of the designs uh, screamed Brave influence. Uh, especially uh, the blue one. I can't remember the uh, its name. The combined mode kind of resi- uh, resembled uh, the what was what was to come after Gal Gygar. Uh, it looked like uh, Great Bongon. Uh, 
and it harkened to his look very much so. Um, but the execution of the toys, it's like, I remember they came out. Uh, I didn't pre-order them because at the time, this, this uh, if you've been watching the show or know me at all, you know that I had a serious uh, tractor-trailer incident accident uh, of several years ago that was around the time that these things came out so i didn't have them pre-ordered uh so i, I missed out on their initial launch and boy am in retrospect am i glad that i did because uh, you know I, I i had i got these things i had a chance to mess with one uh you know several months later and i'm like this thing is a piece of shit I hated it. I'm like, there's like, the posability was like very limited. Uh, the construction felt very cheap. Uh, and I really questioned where in the hell they were trying to go with this line. Um, and fortunately, it ended very, very quickly. Uh, I think, wasn't it? So wasn't there it were essentially, only four figures. Wasn't it four essentially figures. a uh, intended to uh, be a reason to bring over Beast Hunters? No. So what Transformers Go was, there were four figures. Uh, I think they all combined. You had the 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 red one, the blue one, <laughs> and the other one. Uh, the the fire truck, the uh, jet, and I think another one was the wolf. And the three of them combined into a larger robot. And then there was Convoy, who was a train, which is the only one I opened. I had them all. I have them all, but I only opened Convoy. And I think he also combined with them. And I thought there, there was, was there, the, was, there was a whole line. They brought over Beast Hunters uh, under the Transformers Go banner, but original okay. molds. There was only four. Okay, so um, what Transformers Go was after the second season of Transformers Prime, much like Beast Wars Two and Beast Wars Neo, this was a sequel to Transformers Prime in in Japan that only was out in Japan. There was some animation. I think it only came with the DVDs or the VCDs that came with the figures. Uh, I think there was maybe one or two episodes produced that I, I can recall. Um, if you're a Transformers Go expert out there, please send me a, a, a message. Not I, that I, I read it, but... <laughs> I bought the uh, combiner Junk sets. Or the two combiner sets, because there was the, you know, the Autobot combiner set and the Decepticon combiner set. Mm-hmm. Um, and those are the two sets I bought from Orson at Capture Prey. Um, just because I was I was really iffy on those. I was like, man, I don't know. But I was like, oh, it's combiners, and I don't have it, so I have to buy it, right? I was in that mentality. And yeah, I not I was pretty underwhelmed with them. Some of the alt modes were pretty neat, like the ones the shark and you know, the ones the lion. Like it's kind of neat, but um, ultimately they were pretty big letdown. Yeah. For the first couple of figures being all new tooling, all new molds, and having they're very sizable, it's odd that there wasn't enough, in my opinion, fan buildup to getting these new tools. Like there wasn't a whole lot of people who's like, "I gotta have it," right? It's like they and announced now, they announced it, and we just sat back and waited, and and it's like everybody was lukewarm on it even before it was released. Yeah. And now I, all the all the original molds are like on clearance. Like you can get them for under twenty five bucks at, at online uh, retailers. Yeah, and even I at think, that, I'd be hesitant. <laughs> I think the reason why is actually could be why you said earlier, Orson. The reason you were excited for it is because it kind of felt it reminded you of Brave and kind of Galgagar. And I think that aesthetic to the larger Transformer populace was that's why we all were kind of like, hmm, this is in the Transformer line. But the aesthetics don't really match what we're currently getting from Transformers or the Prime line, which, you know, as being a subline of Prime. And I think that's why everybody held off. And then when they came in, it's like, okay, these are actually, they didn't fit in. They obviously, they were made to go with Prime, but they obviously did not fit in with Prime. Um, everybody just said, okay, yeah, you know, clearance time, or I'm just going to continue not buying it. And boom, boom. All right, let me uh, let me throw another one at you. Now, this is one. It, it, this is an iffy one. All right, because there was a lot of products released, but was it a short time again? <sighs> this was 2014, 2015. So over the course of like a year and a half. Q Transformers, QT, 
Actually, those were kind of neat. These were super deformed, tiny Transformers. Um, you had Lockdown, Bumblebee, Optimus, you know, your, your usual suspects, mm-hmm. right? But they're super yeah. deformed, but they're, they're actually transforming, and they all had a similar transformation gimmick. But try and find someone over here stateside that has them all. Or, you know, has more than two. I have Skywarp. <laughs> you got Skywarp. I think I only have one, yeah. right? And I'm, I'm Mr. Everything. Like, I just keep waiting and waiting for those to get cheaper and cheaper before I go after them. I feel like... Uh, they're neat, so, but they just don't have a niche. Well, they're all the... You kind of say stuff, they all transform the same. Mm-hmm. So if you got one, then you have them all. I feel like, as far as the interaction, play with it, and do you... I don't know how you guys are, especially when we talk about collecting everything. I still have a big collection. I've started paring down the past couple of years, but Let's, a shelf you of have the a same giant thing room over and over. <laughs> I got a pretty big room down here. Um, it's, I mean, just at some point, it's like these are little things. They're fun. They're cute, but they're desk toys. There's not a lot to them. It's something you fiddle with at your desk, and that's great. You know, I love having product like that, but I don't need, you know, a full shelf full of them. So. Right. It's not a, it's not a definitive representation of that character. Oh. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah. I, and, I, and, and, I remember at BotCon 2016, uh, there was a dealer over near the entranceway that actually had a table full of the QT Transformers. And my girlfriend, loving the cutesy type stuff, you know, I think that's kind of what the name kind of plays on QT. Uh, mm-hmm. Um. She's like, oh, well, what are these? You know, and I'm like, and I explained to her what they were. They're, you know, they're super deformed, and she didn't know what that meant. And I said, well, basically, just imagine tiny body, big head. You know, uh, you know, cutesy top character. And she found Jazz, which you know, uh, her daughter's name is Jasmine, so she gets everything Jazz. Uh, so she got Jazz, and I picked out Skywarp because I like Skywarp, and it was the there only wasn't one. a weird wolf. No, there wasn't a werewolf. So, uh, and Skywarp was the only one that they had that really appealed to me. Uh, so I, I got Skywarp. He's cool. I like him. And like you said, he's he's very much a desk bot. Uh, I had him on, you know, whenever I lived in my apartment before I moved here, I had him right here on my computer desk. And during, during TFYLP episodes, I'd sit there and fiddle with him. Mm-hmm. Uh, but beyond that, uh, having a whole line of them, I had... No, I didn't. I didn't need a whole lot of them. No, exactly. So I think we've reached just about all we can talk in regards to. There's the there's a lot less of than stellar toy lines. There's a lot of lines out there. A lot of sub lines out there in the Transformers brand. Uh, we could literally talk for hours. I'm sure on this. R- real quick, give me another one, Duran. Look right there. Oh, wow. Uh, though titaniums. Titanium. <laughs> See, titaniums is one yeah. where they're, they made a lot of figures. And, I they, mean, I guess you could say titaniums tapered off in the end, but all lines taper off in the end. Titaniums yeah. were... But then it hasn't of, come back. To me, that's what... It hasn't what come it, back, yeah. and it didn't have staying power. Uh, the thing... But, well, the Rodimus came out again in that Galvatron it's Rodimus two pack. Oh, well. uh, it was the Transformers Platinum Edition. It was Titanium Rodimus versus Deluxe Generations Galvatron, which didn't make any sense. No. That's that's out there. Let's just pull uh, two molds out of our ass and put them in a package. Yeah, it's just <laughs> yeah. yeah, we have these characters. Let's just you know screw it. Let's just put them together. Um, but you know, with, with, go ahead. With I, I love Titanium for what it did. It got us a representation of characters that. We weren't going to see any other way at the time. I think nowadays generations and you know at the time the that was probably the best damn yeah. scourge we had ever got. And, that scourge for, is awesome. Yeah. And for War Within pre Cybertron, exactly. that was really you know we had that pre Cybertron Optimus and Grimlock. We got Prowl. We got Megatron. We got an then, Ultra Magnus that transformed in one, which had never been done before. Yeah. I don't think really, yeah. at least not G one. So yeah, yeah we, we got G1 a lot of inspired Magnus. That first wave sucked. The first wave was floppy as hell. There's there's no getting around it, and I think that really hurt it from the get go. Well, um, the, but uh, after that, I the, think the line really came into its own, except for like Soundwave. The thing that yeah, diaper Soundwave. Uh, yeah. The thing that a lot of people had against Titanium series, uh, not only was it floppy, uh, a lot of the releases floppy. 
Uh, but then you had some figures that, you know, were great otherwise, but then they had elements about them that was terrible, like the sound wave. It was, the sound wave was generally good, except for his waist. Just looked like he was wearing a diaper. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But the biggest complaint that, uh, that I always read online, um, you know, and at the time that these came out, I was uh, heavily active on TFW, and everybody was always bitching about, uh, you know, die cast die cast and plastic it's not a good combination to me it is a good yeah to me it is a good combination <laughs> if used and done correctly but there is a point when you have too much die cast and i think titanium went there it's especially like especially in the arms yeah it's like titanium it's like you like die cast well here's your fucking die cast <laughs> well, know, and that, that's, that's what, the name of the know, line yeah, and here's your, I didn't yes, find it here's your fucking diecast. Yeah, don't <laughs> yeah. Shut up. Here's your war with that. Yeah, it, it, right. it's it's almost like that's uh, what that's what they right. went with. Oh, and yeah. and let's not forget, we also got war within Jetfire, which was a sloppy mess. Yes, that one holds together. Mine is good, but it, uh, mine's just it was Lucy yeah. as it was Lucy Goosey from the start. Yeah, uh, and then uh, so I I wouldn't say that one's a failure as much as just it tapered out towards the end. Yeah. Uh, it had a lot of promise and, uh, and a lot of... And, and it has a comeback. There's yeah. been no more die cast in Hasbro mainline Transformers aside since then, I don't think. Because that was also after... Uh, oh, that's right. Alternators didn't have any oh. anyways. That was Bionel Tech. So. so with Titaniums, um, I don't remember if there were that... If there were any three-inch figures that never came out. I think there was a couple of repaints that never came out, uh, like the yellow repaint of Alternator Sideswipe in 3-inch never came out. Uh, but with the 6-inch Titaniums, which were more popular, we never got the Sound Blaster that came with the Ravage. Yep. Never got Opti- uh, Primal Prime, which was a repaint of Optimal Optimus. Yep. And we never got, there were four new molds. Uh, they were never they never got tooled up. These uh, ones we saw at BotCon in Rhode Island? Yeah, it was Shockwave. Um... Bumblebee, uh, War for Cybertron, Bumblebee with a cliff jumper head, Cosmos and RC. Yeah, and, and I remember, I remember at the time, especially pining for that RC so hard, just because we'd never gotten a G1 RC, and obviously yeah. we finally have now, and she's been repainted a billion times, which is great. And you know, with Power of the Primes coming out, we're about to get a bunch of the Fembots from that old G1 episode. You know, some representation of those characters, which is it, it's, it's better than nothing. And, um, but, you know, I was, I was glad to finally get a mainline G1RC. It took a long time, though. And not to go off on a tangent, this this is a con- – here's an idea for a show one day, Duran. Let's get a bunch of girls on and talk about female Transformers. And w- I think collectively we have to find a better name than Fembots hmm. and, and Femputer. That, for, uh, for, that might be for, a good good t- a good instance to bring back uh, two original TFYLP members, uh, Natsume and Mirai Baby. Uh, right. Get let's, them back on. Let's get the ladies back on here, and we'll, we'll make it a girlfriend's episode again. Yes, because uh, uh, that was that was a popular show. But you but, know, um, the, th- the thing wasn't uh, you know, and kind of tying in with uh, with our next episode, Trans Tech, wasn't that War Within Prime uh, slightly taken from Design Q from uh, Trans Tech Optimus Primal or Optimus Prime? No, that was all uh, Don Figaro inspired Dreamwave art. They were all they were all pretty much uh, well because uh, straight the tra- out of the comic books. The tra- the trans- Except for that Megatron. Well, the Trans Tech Optimus Prime, uh, the vehicle mode, looked a whole lot like that though. It did, but it the Trans Tech vehicle had the gorilla face on it. Yeah, it well, was like a truck. I'm, sa- I'm not saying it, it was a straight up. I'm, I'm not saying it was a straight up copy of it, but I mean, it, it, no, no, no. They it, were. I'm telling you, they were based off the Dreamwave comics. Except for that Megatron. I still don't know where that thing came from. Well, the, the, the first, first tank, tank me- yeah, the first tank Megatron. Interesting side note: that was the first official GI Joe Transformers crossover in product form. Because really? on the bio, it, was- it actually said he was a, he was rebuilt by Cobra, and it actually mentioned Cobra Commander and Cobra. And I don't remember the bio off the top of my head, but that that was I remember thinking, oh, that's the first official crossover. I, I had heard that it was based off something from GI Joe, but I had the. Transformers versus G.I. Joe comics, and I was like, I don't see this guy in there. It's possible yeah, I missed it, no. but okay. Well, no, you know, was... like like I said earlier, we could go on for hours and hours about, you know, lines that that had potential and missed the mark or just flat out sucked. Um, 
and we've we've mentioned some really good ones here and i think we've talked about some really good things on that subject we'd love to hear from you the listeners and the viewers uh what lines kind of did the same for you you know that uh, that you had a lot of hope for that you were ultimately disappointed with or just lost interest in uh or had no interest in at all uh let us know um you can post it in our facebook group at facebook.com slash group slash tfyop the same place where we show robot porn um and then also tweet us at tfyop on twitter uh, we'd love to hear from you. And, and as always, hey. right down there in the comments below this video, if you're watching us, uh, we'd love to hear from you there. What was that, Rick? No, never mind. Uh, I was going to make an obscene, uh, obscene joke, but uh, no, it's okay. Not on TFYLP, no. <laughs> uh, it's, it's pronounced Tiflip for the last fucking time. No. It's pronounced Tiflip. I made this damn show. I say it's not. <laughs> Table Robert, flip? That- Thank you for joining us today. Welcome oh, to the show. Oh, thanks for having me. This was Absolutely. fun. I love talking Absolutely. about Absolutely. Hope, uh, hope you can keep joining us. Uh, Absolutely. You know, uh, you know, Christian and you, I think you, you know, you're both great additions to this podcast. Uh, Got to get that uh, ginger quota up. Yeah. Uh, especially with uh, you guys have a lot of good knowledge and, uh, and obviously a lot of passion for this franchise and this toy line. It's just uh, it's great to have guys like you on. Um, and if you, the viewer or the listener, have passion for us uh, on this podcast, you can always help us. Yeah, <laughs> in uh, in other ways, not not those ways, not not the oh, ways, oh, not oh. the ways that you're you're thinking. <laughs> but you can help us continue. Uh, you know, helping us with our server fees and upgrades and all that stuff. Uh, that can be done through our Patreon at patreon.com/tfylp. Uh, uh, everybody that helps us. Uh, we thank you from the bottom of our heart. I'm continuing to get uh, stuff in. I'm trying to build up some swag. Uh, you know, if you're like, I think the $25 level and everything, you get stuff like this this cool mouse pad here. Uh, you know, I'll throw those in there. I got some uh, window cling stickers now. Um, I'm working on perfecting those. Uh, right now, they're, they're a big square. I want to get them pre-cut. For, for $500... I will send you a hard drive, and you may be surprised at what's on it. Yes. There's a but, lot of Kiss Player-related stuff on there. But <laughs> the deal is, the deal is, you are not allowed to show anyone what's on the hard drive. You can talk about it, but you can't show them what's on the hard drive. Absolutely. That's, that's a hard drive from back in the day. Yes. And also, if there is a... Uh, our t- highest tier on there, if you go with our highest tier on there... Uh, one of the great things that you will get if you do that is an autographed copy of a book. A book by Rick Alvarez, the unofficial guide to vintage Transformers, by some schmuck named J. E. Alvarez. With photography by Dur- Durinland. Yeah, some Durinland. Some, Durinland. some some Durinland. schmuck named Durinland. Yeah. What Durinland. what's a book? Is that like Grandpa Internet? This one has lots of pictures, it's, so it's there's analog not analog internet. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Analog. Okay. <laughs> analog internet. <laughs> and with that, I think we will bid you adieu and join us next week on TFYLP. Uh, thank you all for everyone, uh, everyone for joining us this week, and thank you, Rob. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Gracias. Gracias. Uh, arigato. Uh, how uh, other ways to say it? I don't know. Arigato's goodbye. You would say domo. Slightly. Oh, domo. Okay. Okay. Uh, I th- okay. I don't speak Japanese, so don't don't hate on me.